Really nice to see that so many people are interested in the solutions of our future transportation. Uh, let's see if I can bring you one solution on how we're going to transport ourselves on the road in the future. So my mission here is to say that even though I know that you love wireless, you love your smartphone, but now we're going to discuss energy and not information, and then I think that we should stay connected instead. Now, let us put a question. Can we go from Stockholm to Gothenburg on one litre of petrol? Sounds a bit difficult, isn't it? But at KTH, they did it. That is the team from KTH competing at Shell Eco Marathon last year. And at that competition, you have to build very efficient small vehicles. And they managed to do an equivalent of 530 kilometers of one liter of petrol. That's longer than from Stockholm to Gothenburg. The thing is, you, want, you would not like to take your family in that car that we have up here, of course. But what it, uh, what it tells us is that we have possibilities. We can do more with less in the future. We have to make the vehicles more efficient, and we have to uh, make it possible to use many different energy sources. This one ran on hydrogen. But in that competition, we also have vehicles running on petrol and diesel, etc., etc. What about moving ourselves? Is that a problem, or what are we actually moving? If you just think about it for a minute, if you want to move yourself, you take a pair of shoes, and then you need two kilograms or something like that. If you want to be a bit faster, you take your bike, and it's something like 20 kilograms instead. But if you want to be even faster, then you take your car. I'm not quite sure where I should position Kurtz way of transportation, but what are we actually moving here? At the end of today, Gunnar is going to tell us we don't even need the two kilograms if we want to transport, uh, if we want to uh, use transportation. Te teleportation, sorry about that. Whatever we will see in the future, the transport solutions will be very electrical, I believe. Why is that? Well, by using electrical system, we can, in principle, make energy conversion with no losses at all. In principle, we can have 100% efficiency. Electrical systems are also very flexible. We can use many different energy sources, transport them through our electrical system, and distribute them to whatever consumer we have. To demonstrate that, in our lab, we decided to show that we can have almost 100% efficiency. This is a 40 kilowatt converter that we designed in our lab that can, uh, for example, propel a car and convert the electrical power coming from the battery going into the motor with just the loss equivalent to 120 watts. 120 watts is the same as two bulbs of these nowadays banned uh, uh, lamps, because they were too inefficient. Isn't that fantastic? The heat from this converter to handling 40 kilowatts is only equivalent to two bulbs. Then some of you might say, well, in the winter time, I want to heat up my car. I can't do that with two bulbs, that's too little. No, but as Volvo has shown, it's much better to use 100% efficiency if you want to heat up your car. So why not use fossil fuel, diesel, or some renewable, and heat up the car directly with the heat, and not going through the combustion engine. One thing that we though have to remember is that electricity is a fresh commodity. It should be digested as soon as it is produced. Sorry, Christina. We will need your batteries, but we're not going to solve the energy problem of Sweden with the batteries, but we're going to solve the transportation problem with the batteries. We still need them. But electricity should be used as quick as it is produced. Um. The solution might be electric roads. It, what do I mean by electric roads? Is that something that is very dangerous? Does it mean that you will be electrocuted as soon as you're standing on the road? No, probably not, or hopefully not, I should say. The idea is that we're going to make it possible for the vehicles of the future to collect their power directly from the electrical grid. That can be done in several different ways. We can, for example, use some kind of a catenary overhead system, just like we do for trains. You see that as a blue line on top. 
That could be handy for heavy trucks, for example. They are tall enough to have a short pantograph and pick up the energy from the catenary system directly. For private cars, it might be a bit more difficult to pick up the energy from the top. But then we could use some kind of delivery system underneath the car. It could be both be inductive or wireless, just like you have at home for your brushless uh, tooth. Sorry, oh, sorry. Uh, or it could be conductive also. That is, we have a rail in the ground that we electrify, that we energize and pick up the energy from. Isn't that dangerous then? If you have an electrical rail on the ground and <clears throat> you stand there, well, the thing is that we're going to have very short sections, and we only energize the sections when a vehicle is moving and on that section. And that can be with information technology very simple. That means that if you're standing in front of the car, when that section is getting energized, oh, I don't think that you would like to stand there anyway. Now we have the system then. We have the technology to, as we call it, slide in. Give the energy to the vehicle directly from a, a distributed system. Then we should build up a system in Sweden. We would use the very dense uh, the system with a lot of traffic first. We would electrify that first. And then we would spread out the grid from these dense transportation corridors and electrify them also. But I don't think that we will electrify all roads in Sweden or the globe for that. We will still have to rely on energy storage on board the vehicles to go to the, uh, to the far end of our journey. That means that Christina's uh, batteries are very, very important still. So the electric roads, they will basically use electricity as soon as it is produced, but they will also use batteries to do the last part of the journey. Is then the batteries the new gold? I mean, it's, we know they're quite expensive, and we know that the price will go down, but still they are quite expensive. Historically, we had the gold bars, and we gathered them all together just to show how much of resource we had, but today we have this Batteries spread out all over the country. Perhaps we should have battery banks in the future. So you, as a private cons consumer, doesn't own your battery yourself. The battery owns the bank ba owns the battery, and you simply uh, use it when you need it, and you pay for it when you need it. When we go for electrifying our transportation, Sweden can be a forerunner. We produce our electricity mainly from nuclear and hydropower. That means that if we go from fossil fuel vehicles to electrical vehicles, we will not just simply move the combustion from the vehicle to the coal power plant or something like that. We will change it to nuclear and hydro. That means that the carbon dioxide footprint will reduce substantially if we electrify our vehicles in Sweden. To do that, we will need an internet of electricity. That means that we build up a grid all over Europe, for example, where we will be able to connect all different energy sources with all the consumers. This DC transmission grid can then use hydropower up from the north. It can use wave and wind power from the open waters and it can use solar power where we have a lot of sun. Just to give you an idea, if we use less than 1% of Sahara's area, that's enough to produce electricity, which is uh, enough to supply the whole of Europe. So, my mission here is to say that stay connected when it comes to transportation, road-bound transportation. We no, don't know yet, but perhaps we can solve it also for the uh, airbound transportation. As he said, we already, as you said, Kurt, we already have solutions. But until then, let's stay on the ground and stay connected. Thank you very much. <laughs>